Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another lecture on circular motion in grade 12 physics. Today we're going to look at circular motion and a car on an inclined plane. So you're going to have to bear with me. This is a new tablet that I'm using for doing these. And so um, my drawing doesn't seem to be particularly um, good at the moment. And that's just because I'm still dealing with the learning curve of how to use this new slick tablet. If you will, um, you can imagine that you have a car that's driving around an on-ramp. If you've ever driven onto the 401, you know what I'm talking about. Um, you have an on-ramp such that you have the dotted line going around. And the car is actually driving around this on-ramp. And we've cut the on-ramp in cross-section. And the car is actually going to drive out of the screen at us. Let's see if I can draw a car for you to see. So it's going to be a fairly simple car where we have a windshield. And we'll put some uh, windshield wipers on the windshield. And then here's the front hood of the car. And... Um, we'll put some headlights on that front hood of the car and you've got some tires down here so you can see the car is driving towards you out of the screen um, I can probably leave that car there let's take a look at what happens if we analyze the circular motion of this so this on-ramp actually if you look at it from um, an overhead view um, you would see that it is a circle and so this car is in fact in circular motion and what we find is that if we if we look at that circular motion we have a radius and that radius let's say that radius is 300 meters okay and um, let's say the mass of the car is 800 kilograms and let's pretend that we know the incline here of this uh, theta and we'll say that we know that theta is equal to 11 degrees okay so um, we can analyze this situation and we can say what is the safe speed that you could drive this car at regardless of uh, any weather conditions and when we say regardless of any weather conditions we mean even if there's freezing rain and there's tons of ice on the road what is the safe speed that we could drive this car at and if there's freezing rain on the road we have to negate or neglect um, a common force and what force is that if you said friction you would be right so the force of friction kinetic in our little activity here is going to equal zero newtons okay so we're not gonna have any force of friction uh, in our analysis today so if we were to analyze this we have to think about where exactly is the center of the circle and so we can put the center of the circle I don't know somewhere over here it's not quite to scale but that's okay and we know how to label our axes, of course, and we'll, we'll label towards the center, uh, towards in the direction of our acceleration, and we'll consider that to be x positive. Okay, so we can, we can see here the setup for this question, and, and we can kind of see how we're going to end up doing it. First thing we have to draw on this diagram will be, of course, our forces. So let's put on here our force of gravity. That's always simple. It's always pointing towards the center of the planet. And we can always put on here our normal force if there is a surface because the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface and everybody knows that. Okay, so we've got our normal force and we've got our force of gravity. And we come across our first issue here, which is if this is our positive x-axis, what force is actually causing this car to corner? And if you stop and look for a moment, you can see that you can actually divide your normal force into components. So we have an x component of our normal force and similarly we have a y component of our normal force and we of course have to add on to here that we have a y axis as well which means that our force of gravity is in the y axis and we have an f n y and we have a f n x. Okay so let's start analyzing this. We've got most of our givens written down. We've got our unknown. We know we have to find the, the safe speed that we can travel this at. And we now know that our next step is to look at some equations. So we can look at the sum of the forces centripetal, which is really our x's in this case. Um, and we know what this is equal to. If we have an uh, um, sorry, a question that's dealing with speed, 
we know that we're going to have this equal to mass times speed squared divided by r. And what exactly is that going to be equal to? Well, it's going to be equal to our only x component force, which is f and x. Okay. And f and x in this case is going to be equal to, um, well, we have to find out what f and x is equal to relative to f n. Now, with a little bit of um, understanding of your geometry, I can see a z pattern, which means that the angle that f n x makes with the inclined plane is actually going to be theta, which means that this angle is not theta but in fact, this angle here is going to be theta for us as well. So if we are trying to analyze for Fn x, we're gonna to have to use this angle, which is theta, and so since this is the opposite to that angle, we're going to say that Fn x is equal to sine theta times Fn. Okay, so it looks like we've got ourselves um, about as far along as we can using our x components, why don't we take a look at our y's. So I'm just going to move them up here. The sum of the y components in this case um, is going to be equal to, uh, well, we know the car is not accelerating through the floor or the road, and we know that it's not accelerating into the sky off the road, so it's going to be equal to zero as there's no acceleration in the y component. And we also know that this is going to be equal to f n y plus f g unlike some other inclined plane questions we've done in dynamics this f g has no components it's only the f and y that we're looking at here so this is going to be equal to cos theta times f n plus f g um, and this is going to be a negative value and this is going to be a positive value. So we can quickly isolate this and look at just the magnitudes making everything positive. And we will see that uh, cos theta times Fn equals m times g. And if we want to isolate for Fn here, we have Fn is equal to m times g divided by cos theta. Now we can take this equation and we can put it into here and what we'll end up with is an equation that says mv squared all over r is equal to sine theta times m times g divided by cos theta. A couple of things we can do right now, let me just change some pen colors. Um, I have m on both sides, so I can divide both sides by m, and m will become 1, and that will cancel out, as you like to say. I'm going to take this equation, I'm going to go to another slide, so make it easier for us to see. So the equation we had there was mv squared all over r is equal to sine theta times m times g divided by cos theta. Okay, and as I said in the last, in the end of the last slide, we can divide both sides by m and get rid of that. And we can also multiply both sides by r. And if we do that, we will simplify this equation to v squared is equal to sine theta times g times r all over cos theta. Okay. Now, if you think back to your grade 12 trig or grade 11 trigonometry, you notice that sine theta divided by cos theta is actually equal to tan theta. So we can rewrite this um, quite simply as, and I don't really like this v squared, so let's square root both sides. We'll end up with v is equal to the square root of, by taking the square root of both sides, tan theta times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second, times the radius, which in this, que in this question is 300 meters. And by doing this, we can solve for the safe speed at which you can corner this on-ramp. 